Right. Uh, let's see. Could I just ask that everyone mute their devices? Uh, great to see everyone. I'm Alicia Cordes Mayo, Communications Director at DEED. Welcome. Thanks for joining us for the jobs report here with DEED. Uh, please do keep your devices muted until the end, and we'll have questions after the presentation. You can use the raise hand function or you can type questions in the chat. So we're happy to have you with us today. And with that, I'll turn it over to Commissioner Verilek. All right. Thanks, Alicia. Thanks, everybody, for being with us today to have a look at our most recent employment data. Uh, let's start with continued job growth. Pleased to report that Minnesota gained 9,500 jobs from October to November. This is the fifth straight month of growth and the largest monthly jobs increase since January. Uh, for sake of comparison, the Minnesota job growth rate is currently well higher than the national rate. So Minnesota jobs grew 0.3% on a seasonally adjusted basis last month, outpacing the nation a whole at 0.1%. Uh, over the last three months, jobs in Minnesota grew 17,300 or 0.6%, which outpaces the national rate at 0.2%. So I would say this continued growth is great for Minnesota workers and the economy as a whole. And it's worth noting that job growth only happens in this survey. Uh, it's measured uh, when there are workers to fill open jobs. So for each job added, another person is becoming employed. Somewhat paradoxically, though, when it comes to the labor force survey, we saw a decrease this month. And that may seem puzzling given what I just said about the jobs figures. But uh, you may know that there are two different surveys in the mix here, one of payroll jobs and one of workers, and the numbers don't always easily align. And that's what happened this month as the labor force survey showed a decrease of 7,400 people over the month. So the labor force includes people who are working as well as people who are looking for work. Uh, that decline bumped Minnesota's labor force participation rate down two tenths of a percent to 68.3%. Uh, it's still high though, compared to the national figure of 62.8%. As we look forward, I'd say we're excited at DEED to continue rolling out new and expanded efforts to uh, expand our workforce, working with workforce development partners to bring more people into that labor force in 2024. Uh, three new initiatives are rolling out soon, and we're in the process of identifying partners for two of them right now, namely the Targeted Populations Workforce Grants and the Drive for Five initiative as well and the Clean Economy Equitable Workforce Grant Program will roll out next year. And I can tell you we have other uh, of the more um, long-standing programs that are in the mix and uh, rolling out grant announcements at this moment as well. Finally, our unemployment figure ticked down slightly in November. Uh, Minnesota's rate went to went down by one-tenth of a percent to 3.1 percent in November, and that compares to 3.7 percent nationally. And with that, I will hand things over to Labor Market Information Director Angela Wynn for a deeper dive on the details. Thank you, Commissioner. I am going to go into the details of the job growth by super sector. Um, so overall, the majority of super sectors in Minnesota gain jobs on a seasonally adjusted basis over the month. Um, so trade, transportation and util utilities left the gain with 3,300 jobs, up 0.6%. Next is education and health services gained 2,700 jobs, up 0.5%. Government did well over the month, gaining 1,100 jobs, up 0.3%. Manufacturing gained 1,000 jobs, up 0.3% as well. Leisure and hospitality gained 700 jobs, up 0.3%. Professional and business services gained 500 jobs, up 0.1%. Other services gained 500 jobs, which is a 0.5% increase. And construction gained 300 jobs, up 0.2%. Two super sectors had no change over the month, and they are mining and logging and information. And one super sector um, had a small loss of jobs, and that's financial activities, um, down 600 jobs or 0.3%. So overall, Minnesota gained 9,500 jobs in the last month, um, so up 0.3%. And looking back a month previous for October, um, seasonally adjusted job growth was revised up by 800 jobs. So the final estimate is that we gained 7,800 jobs between September and October, rather than the uh, preliminary estimate that we reported of 7,000. And uh, unemployment rates is at 3.1% for November. All right, next slide, please. Our labor force size decreased 7,433 people per month. 
um, and of that, uh, the number of employed decreased by 3,479 workers, and the number of unemployed decreased by 3,954 people. And as of November, our labor force is about 21,700 people smaller than it was pre-pandemic in February 2020. Our labor force participation rate ticked down um, to 68.3%, but it's still holding steady um, at that 68% uh, uh, mark. Next slide, please. And here we are going to look at over the year employment change by super sector. So over the year, Minnesota gained almost 48,000 payroll jobs, a growth of 1.6%. The private sector gained uh, more than 37,000 jobs, up 1.4%. And most super sectors po posted positive annual growth in Minnesota. Um, the big ones are um, construction, uh, that super sector continued its growth streak and it gained more than 7,000 jobs over the year um, at a 5.3% growth rate compared to the 2.6% U.S. growth rate. And the strongest growth continued to be in heavy and civil engineering construction in building equipment contractors and specialty trade contractors. The second um, star performing super sector is trade transportation and utilities. They gained more than 15,000 jobs over the year, um, which is a growth rate of 2.8 compared to 0.3% nationally. Um, education and health services gained almost 27,000 jobs, up 4.8% compared to the national rate of 4.2%. And this is mostly driven by growth in healthcare and social assistance sector. Uh, the same four sectors that we saw last month um, uh, losing jobs over the year uh, are still are still the case this month. Um, manufacturing lost a little more than 5,000 jobs, down 1.6%, um, while the U.S. grew 0.2%. Information lost about 1,700 jobs, down 3.6%, um, but the U.S. also experienced a decline in the super sector, um, down 3.1%. Financial activities lost um, almost 7,700 jobs over the year, down 4%, while the U.S. rate uh, grew 0.6%. And professional and business services lost almost 8,000 jobs, down, point, down 2%, while the U.S. grew 0.9%. Next slide, please. Overall, wage growth has been near the rate of inflation for the last six months. However, because inflation was consistently higher than wage growth between mid-2021 to early 2023, the cumulative effect over three years is that inflation um, is still surpassing wage growth over three years. So for November, average hourly wages for all private sector workers in Minnesota was $36.29. Over the year, um, growth rates for wage um, was 3.4%, and over three years, it's 13.2% uh, for Minnesota. Nationally, the private sector hourly wages averaged uh, $33.99, so about um, $2, a little more than $2 less than the Minnesota average. Um, national wage grew 4% over the year and 14.2% over three years. Um, inflation for all urban consumers for November is 3.1% over the year and 18% over three years. And that is all I have. Commissioner, back to you. Great. So uh, appreciate that, Angelina. And with that, I think we are open for questions. And I see, see a hand, else? although I don't know from whom, so uh, there, Alicia, Chris. I'll invite Great. you. Great, Emma. Oh, sure. Perfect. Hi. Emma, over to you, please. Thank, Thank you. you. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay, yep. great. Um, I just wanted to ask about out um, your thoughts on the state level census numbers that came out earlier this week, showing that um, Minnesota's population growth has kind of returned to normal following some declines during the pandemic, um, but also like other states, we're continuing to see a declining birth rate and more deaths. Um, wanted to just get your thoughts on how those trends, um, how you see those things affecting the labor market long term. 
Well, I would start there and say, yes, I, I definitely was pleased to see that figure. I think it was a total of 23,600 um, uh, additional that we saw as of the cutoff of that um, survey from the Census Bureau, which I think it was July. Um, so that is nice to see that uh, we've had a reversal of some of the um, pandemic dynamics. And of course, that is a positive thing for uh, all those employers that have more demand for workers than they can find. Um, and beyond that, I would say that we hope to um, continue supporting that trend and inviting uh, Minnesotans by being a welcoming place, but more concretely, uh, we collaborate with our partners at Explore Minnesota uh, on their Explore Minnesota for Business effort, which was funded in the last legislative session, I think 11 or $12 million, which will help make the case to folks in other states uh, that this is a great place to raise your family. This is a great place to find a job. This is a great place not just to visit for a weekend and spend tourism dollars, which we love, but also to come and make a life here. And in fact, I'm a transplant myself, and so uh, that's that's kind of personal to me. So this is good news, and um, you know, it's only uh, one year of data, uh, but we will look to see that continue and uh, try to drive it as well. Uh, likewise, you know, at Deed, we have our Office of New Americans, which is helping to uh, again welcome people and make state resources accessible to all. Uh, and then with our various workforce development programs, um, try to connect as people do um, enter the labor force, connect them to great opportunities. Angelina, I don't know if you have anything to add there. Yes, I would add that um, the 23,600 growth that we saw, half of that was from natural uh, increase, which is more births than deaths. And the other half of that is um, increased in migration um, internationally. So people are, in other countries are coming to Minnesota and um, my migrational uh, increase is usually uh, of people in the working age uh, range. Um, so yeah, this is a, a this has good implications for uh, Minnesota's labor force long term. Great. Thank you, Angelina. Thanks, Commissioner. Uh, Peter, let's go over to you, please. Hi, thank you. Hey, can you stay on those census numbers for a second? Um, uh, Angelina, you mentioned the international uh, in migration but the numbers also showed a domestic negative, a de domestic migration negative number of, I forget, somewhere around 4,500 people, which is also sort of a continuing trend. So what, what does DEED do about a situation where it is continuing to be dependent on international uh, in migration? Is, is the, are there programs that re recruit or encourage or help those work, those workers when they arrive in the state. Uh, well, I could jump in a little bit on that one. First of all, I think the domestic migration dynamic is one that we've seen at varying levels over, I believe, two decades. And so it is, um, you know, not necessarily a new trend there. Uh, and we are fortunate to have. Um, international arrivals here, um, talented people um, becoming Minnesotans. And an example that I already mentioned, our Office of New Americans is one way that we try to connect folks to resources. And it lives at DEED, but its purpose is to um, support kind of accessibility across state government. Um, and ultimately, yes, to um, potentially connect to opportunities uh, to enter the labor force and or potentially to start a business. Uh, and we have a variety of programs on the small business side, for example, to uh, help people get into entrepreneurship. We do a lot of our work through partners, and so it might be grant making through the small business assistance partnership um, to supplement what's available through the SBA, to supplement what's available through the commercial banking system, et cetera, uh, to provide maybe culturally tailored uh, entrepreneurship training, followed by one on one assistance, followed by uh, additional lending resources, et cetera. So yes, in a variety of ways, DEED, as well as partners at other uh, agencies who have workforce development resources, for example, we are uh, collaboratively engaged in trying to connect new arrivals to resources and opportunity uh, to, to thrive and, and have a, a satisfying life and career, and also to help meet the needs of employers. 
Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Commissioner. Other questions? Uh, John, over to you, please. We're not hearing you just yet, John. Sorry about that. Can you hear me now? <laughs> we got you. Terrific. Thank you for the time this morning. Um, I want to know if you could please comment on which sectors and what portions of the state in particular, and with as much specificity as you can, are experiencing labor shortages and how enduring you think these challenges will be and what DEED is, is doing to try to address the sector and geographic shortages. Thank you. Maybe I would start at a high level and then Angelina, I would invite you if you want to share any particular insights from the data. I'll just tell you anecdotally as I travel the state, I think it's a pretty widespread challenge, this issue of a high vacancy rate essentially uh, and of uh, lots of employers having more demand for their goods and services than um, than they can, uh, you know, that that, that outstrips uh, their ability to find uh, the talented people they want to uh, meet that demand. Um, we are working across sectors to address that challenge, but we've also taken uh, what we think is a strategic and targeted approach to making extra effort in certain sectors that we know have especially high demand and that offer family sustaining wages. And so that's where you may have heard us talk before about uh, the so-called drive for five effort, uh, where we are trying to bring people into technology, caring professions, education, manufacturing, and trades, because those meet those tests that I mentioned of high demand and family sustaining wages. And I would say they have uh, large ripple effects. If we can steer young people, mid-career professionals, et cetera, into those uh, domains, into those sectors, uh, that has strong benefits for those sectors, but also lots of ripple effects in the wider economy, the Main Street economy, retail, um, hospitality, et cetera. Uh, and as for what the future holds, it's hard to say as technology changes, et cetera, we can look to the demographic uh, figures, uh, and that is why we are um, in a concerted way working to invite more Minnesotans to join us here uh, to learn about the Minnesota story and the great resources and quality of life we have here. Uh, and then when it comes to the people who are here, that's why we have lots of workforce development programs, the existing ones, a network of 52 career force offices. So you can walk in uh, to a physical location almost anywhere, uh, you know, near to almost anywhere in Minnesota. Uh, and get assistance with job seeking, and then some of the newer programs that we have at DEED, plus lots of our sister agencies across state government also have dedicated workforce development resources, and we're working to align those things so that we are um, achieving maximum impact for every precious taxpayer dollar. So working with partners at uh, Minnesota Department of Education when it comes to the teacher pipeline and other educators positions, uh, likewise Department of Labor and Industry, likewise Department of Human Services, et cetera. So uh, certainly working to um, steer as many people into high demand sectors um, as we can with uh, the resources allocated to us. Thank you, Commissioner. And John, to add some uh, data to answer your question, um, the in terms of sectors, um, healthcare and social assistance, retail trade, accommodation and food services and manufacturing are the sectors that have the most uh, job openings. Um, and the labor markets are tightest in both uh, southern regions, so in the southwest Minnesota and southeast Minnesota. Um, and uh, overall, I, we can't speak to like the future of how um, easy or difficult uh, this problem will persist. Um, but uh, looking back, um, healthcare has been um, uh, having high vacancy rates for a long time uh, and with rising vacancies um, each year. So in 2022, the latest data we have, um, healthcare had 40, more than 45,000 um, vacancies. Uh, manufacturing is the other sector that um, has rising vacancies, um, whereas retail and accommodation and food services um, were struggling before the pandemic, but um, had great recovery and are now back to um, seeing rising vacancies. Thank you, Angelina. 
we do have time for a few more questions. Um, feel free to drop it in the chat. Or let us know. All right, well, you are always welcome to reach out directly to me with any questions or to, oh, hold on, we got a follow up. John, back to you, please. Thank you, and I'll try to be quick. I know we're about to wrap up, but um, can you give a comparative in terms of Minnesota on how it's, you, you know, you compare it nationally, but with um, neighboring states, Dakotas, Iowa, Wisconsin, and then across the country, you know, how unique is Minnesota's employment situation and are there other states that would offer good comparisons? Thank you. Uh, and was that specifically with respect to the labor market or economy as a whole? Both and however one could, you know, be able to answer that question and, you know, data, of course, is is always helpful. But, um, you know, I know we're doing better as a state than the country as a whole on multiple metrics. Um, are there other states around the country that you would say, you know, this is a, a good model for Minnesota or this is a state that's particularly has a high labor participation rate, low unemployment, or you know, doing this as well here. And are they indeed in our region, or are they in other parts of the country? Well, uh, again, I would uh, offer a couple of thoughts, and then Angelina invite you to share. I think we all uh, should take pride in the unique strengths of the Minnesota economy. We are very structurally diverse. We have. Uh, relatively high prosperity, incomes, um, et cetera, a low unemployment. The low unemployment part, I think, is relatively common, uh, or maybe it is almost uniform, um, generally speaking, across the entire United States. Now, the actual unemployment uh, figure varies. Ours is lower than the national average. There was a time when ours was the absolute lowest in the country, uh, which in some ways was... Um, uh, again, a reflection of, of um, strong demand, but really a big challenge for employers trying to find people. So I don't think we want to aim to be uh, the absolute lowest. Uh, when it comes to the demographics, we talked about the census figures. There is a strong regional uh, dynamic at work. You can see that uh, some of the very strongest growing states are in the warmer climates in the south. Um, I think Minnesota within our region of the upper Midwest has really taken a distinct um, strategic approach to policy. We have um, decided to invest in the North Star promise to make college available to all, and particularly for folks uh, for whom it's hardest uh, with, with the North Star promise. Uh, likewise, uh, providing school lunches uh, at breakfast and lunch, uh, meals at breakfast and lunch for all kids uh, that makes us distinct. At Deed, we are proud to be implementing paid family leave, uh, and that's going to be very strong for workers. And folks in our neighborhood of the upper Midwest haven't done that. It's been done elsewhere successfully and uh, around the world, um, but it hasn't been done in our region. So we think those things are going to give us an advantage as people learn more about the Minnesota story, uh, learn more about the Minnesota quality of life, which we will partly tell that story through Explore Minnesota for Business. Uh, we think it makes this an even more attractive place to go with uh, the strengths that we have enjoyed over uh, decades. Thank you, Commissioner. So you cover some of the points that I, I had in mind. Um, and John, this is a, a, a complex question. Um, so in general, Minnesota, as the Commissioner has mentioned, has low unemployment rate, high labor force participation rate, high wages, and um, steady, decent growth. Um, and that's similar. A lot of that is similar to other Midwestern states. Um, they also have low unemployment, um, high labor force participation rate, um, and have growth rate varies, um, but in general, other states have grown as well. Um, I hope that answers your question. Thank you. And please, uh, please do reach out to Deed with any follow-up questions um, on, on any of the topics that they covered today. We're happy to answer those. Any final questions? 
All right, Commissioner, I'm going to turn it back to you for the final word. Well, I would say thanks once again, everyone, for your attention to the economy and these latest figures. I would remind you that the next uh, employment numbers release is slated for January 18th, so we hope you will join us again at that time. And I'll just close by saying I hope everyone enjoys their holiday season and gets a little bit of time to rest and recharge and enjoy family. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. Look forward to connecting next month. Bye-bye. So long.